a second. Okay. Let me know if you can hear me. Everybody, chi somebody chime in and let me know that I'm on air. Takes a second, actually. Okay. Welcome, everybody, to my studio. It is an absolutely gorgeous day here in Portland, Oregon, so I'm really happy to be um, bringing you a kind of an extended program today. It's going to be really exciting. I have a lot planned, uh, so um, welcome. Okay, so I have um, a little surprise for you, and I have a couple announcements. And um, again, the demo is a, kind of a throwback to 2008 when I did a big variation series, and it was an important pivotal point in my painting career. So I love to um, bring it back and share it with you guys. All right, so announcements. I want to give, first of all, a shout out to my good friend, uh, Roger Thompson. Uh, Roger Thompson Photography was in the house last weekend, and thanks, Roger. And his son, Tyler, who was assisting for the absolutely gorgeous photographs of the studio and me were doing a little refresh on the website and Roger always makes everything look so um, beautiful and so super appreciate you, Roger. Love you. Okay, um, also, um, oh, thanks to um, our my team, Kevin and Rudy. We've been working so hard and it is such a pleasure to wake up in the morning and be really excited about what I'm doing and know that I have people that are also really excited, creative, and kind, and just it's just a, such a pleasure, and I feel really blessed to, to have that. So that's amazing. And I have to really um, especially thank all of my students you guys are bringing it to the to the workshops. Really, um, the Facebook groups and the online lessons. Everybody's just bringing a lot of inspiration and creativity to everything. I'm inspired, and I'm inspired to bring you guys new material to work with. Um, so it's just really amazing. So I so appreciate it. Please. Um, Keep it up. Let me know what you're interested in, what, what you need, um, I'm, and I definitely, you know that I'm, I'm there trying to bring um, exactly what you, what you need. Okay, and then I have to give a little shout out to my new watercolor sketching workshop. Um, it's on sale for only five more days. It's $33, per, $33 off, so it's a really good price. Um, it's our launch sale, so we won't be having that price for a while. It is really an accessible, easy, not, well, accessible, affordable, I would say easy workshop to, to jump into online lessons with, can really dig into a drawing and painting um, practice. I designed it so anyone, even with just a little inclination to draw and paint, can just jump right in without a lot of fuss, without a lot of expense and barriers of crazy materials and the like. So don't let that I can't draw thing stop you from checking out this workshop. So go to paintinglessonswithmarla.com uh, and check that out. And if you want to support continued uh, live streams like this one, please um, go over there and check out the paid lessons on my site. Um, as I said, the watercolor workshop is probably the, the uh, just a really great place to start. Um, and we're always trying to up our game and bring you better quality video. And so we, we um, are always trying to bring you cool stuff. And so um, without further ado, here is our little um, addition to um, our live stream. And we're so excited to be bringing this to you. And here it is, three, two, one, our palette cam. So <laughs> there was, was no small feat to bring it to you. <laughs> but um, what's great about it, you'll now be able to see every move I make and come up to the easel and see exactly what I'm reaching for. And I'll, um, so that you'll be, it, we'll keep that on during the entire um, stream. So you can see exactly what's going on. So that, that's super exciting for us. 
Um, okay. All right. So today I am going to be painting at least four different versions of the variations for you. And I know that seems like a lot, but I'm planning on um, a, um, around two hours this time. If you can't stay for the whole thing, you can always watch the recorded version. Um, but so I'm going to start out with a straight pastel on color fix. And then I'm going to move to a straight pastel with pastel matte. And then I'm going to do watercolor underpainting on UART. Excuse me. And then I'm going to do a straight watercolor underpainting. If I have time, I'll do a kind of mixed media version. Okay, let me talk just a teeny bit about how I got started doing the variations and when I did them. So when I first did them, it was way back in 2008, seems like a long, long time ago, and I did over a hundred versions of this very simple composition. It's not even a particularly um, unique or uh, complicated composition. It is a completely made up scene. It's an imaginary place, so there is no reference photo for it. And I kind of started doing all these variations kind of on a dare from a friend. But it grew into something a lot more important to me and really was a pivot point in my career. It was a place that I could really explore and play and um, do what if. It really changed my, my whole way of working. And I ended up writing an article for Pastel Journal about it, and I was on the cover of Pastel Journal. So uh, that is, um, it was really an amazing process for me, writing about it and going through it. I finished all 100 in about, um, I think it was about less than three months. I didn't work on them every single day. Some days I did two. I didn't have rules like that. The only real rules I had, or boundaries, I should say, was they were all the same size, all basically the same composition, and they each had to have some amount of pastel in them. That was it. Er, anything else, the sky was the limit. Now, I've had people over the years say, well, what did you learn from doing a hundred of those? Well, actually, I've done probably over 300 of them because I continued to do them do them for live workshops, demonstrations, and I learned a whole lot. <laughs> I changed the way I, my attitude towards um, painting, towards um, mileage, towards exploration, and pushing my boundaries. And now when I get stuck, when I'm in a rut, I always have a place to start. I can come into my studio and it feels safe and sound, and I can start with a variation. So it's an amazing thing for me. I still head to it every now and then when I, when I really need to. So I, I learned a ton. So um, I'm really excited to be sharing that with you guys. Now, um, a lot of people ask me, look at them and think, oh my gosh, how did you come up with the colors? How did, how did you go about doing that? And it, maybe it kind of feels like you're in the um, deep end of the pool, right? That it's like hard to figure out how, how you would go about choosing colors like that. But actually, it's really like being in the, the shallow end where the kids are playing. Because the kids have all the cool stuff. Kids have the beach balls and the floaties. And they also have stuff like rubber ducks, which is really cool. And that's that's the way it, way it was for me. It still is that way, and but um, so the, to me the the magic of painting doesn't happen like in in the deep end. You're doing laps, right? You got to do the laps because it keeps you in good shape and gives you form. But that's not that's not where the magic happens. The magic happens in the playful exploration that happens in the shallow end of the pool. Um, and yeah, so I think those color choices, you're asking yourself, what if? Um, paper choices, you're asking yourself, what if? Um, materials choices, what if? And you just keep going and, and playing and qu constantly question and explore. So for me, that um, the difference between a process and a formula 
is a good one and is a subtle one, but it's an important l distinction for me. And for me, just painting is keeping an open mind and an open heart and always being willing to clear the way for something new to come in, always being to clear the decks and um, play. Um, painting is mysterious and messy and uh, you have to make way for the mystery um, because that's that's where the where that's where it is that's where the good stuff is so that's a little preachy maybe <laughs> that's but that's my that's I firmly believe that um, so I'm gonna get started I, I I have a little bit of an idea but not totally and I just have to say because I have to say it um, these demonstrations will be available for sale at the end, about three, three or four hours after the stream ends, and they will be available on Daily Paintworks. And so head over there to my gallery, and you should be able to find them pretty easily. Okay, so that is it. And here we go. Wow, this is going to be um, fun. Okay. Yeah, good. We, we're so excited. We've got, um, we've got three cameras now going so it's um, very very uh, new new paradigm in the studio and I hope you like it we're also streaming on um, a different um, machine so we're hoping the quality of the stream is um, better for you guys too so um, please let us know about that and if anyone is having trouble uh, they should try to refresh their pages and like that. Yeah. Yes. If you're having trouble, you should try to refresh your page um, first. That would be um, um, the first thing. Okay. Um, all right. So we're going to get going. And so I'm going to start um, with now that the, all of them are going to be about the same size. And so I have my little mat here so at the end we can look at, see what they look like. So I'm starting on the um, leaf green color fix and I believe this is 10 by 10 and I think that's what the um, that what they the original size of them was and I want to talk just a tad about drawing there is some it's a very simple composition and I can pretty much do this in my sleep right uh, I've done it quite <laughs> just a few times but um, there's some amount of drawing in it nevertheless We've got a horizon. We've got trees that are in front of that horizon, another band of trees. We've got a meandering stream that comes forward in some kind of way, try to get it to be kind of nice. And these ha there are banks here. So there's a width right here to the bank. There's a width right here, here. So it's not without some perspective and some amount of drawing and that's something to keep in mind i'm also going to do a lot of things throughout the painting process that's going to help me describe that that this structure of the landscape and i'm also going to do um, a lot Th this is it has a very um, defined focal point in this particular composition, which is one of the things that I think it makes it so attractive. Um, so I'm going to orchestrate to this focal point. There's things about this composition that aren't so great. It's kind of right down the center. This, this river shape can feel like it's fallen right off, kind of in an abstract way, maybe good or bad. But so there, it's, it's not perfect, right? But what what I think happens with it, I'm going to I'm work it. I'm going to sell it to you. <laughs> so that's, um, I think, a, a good thing. Okay, so I don't have really too much in mind other than I'm thinking on, in this particular case, I'm going to keep this cool, probably green, in this foreground. I'm thinking a blue sky. But other than that, I don't really have too much in mind. But I think I'm going to keep the trees on the dark side at least to start and I'm just gonna put something down gotta start somewhere and I'm gonna put something down and then I'm gonna respond to that something that I put down what else do I want I think I want to get these trees a little bit 
little bit darker in here. So maybe there's some kind of quality of light that there's light spilling into my scene here. All right, what else? I think I want some nice bright emerald green in my bank here and moving back. And I'm just blocking this in, dragging this color in. Kind of a light touch, not a whole lot. And then maybe some gradation in this foreground. Maybe even some of this. To start out with, I'm trying to keep my color story as simple as I can. So um, as limited a palette as I can get. And then as I move along, I'll start playing around with it and getting it a little bit more complicated. I think this distant hillside or landmass light back here, letting the color drift from one shape to another. I don't have to stay within the shapes. I'm a big girl. I can, I can go outside the lines. All right. Same thing here. I can let the, this color drift along the bank so that bank isn't a really hard edge. I could make it more of a hard edge, but I don't really want to. So I'm going to let it meander. And see that little move? It went behind this tree, not in front of. And it also didn't go off the horizon. This stream meanders. It stays in on the, this plane. It doesn't go off into the air. So that's, that's important. Blue sky. Maybe a little softening. Um, I, I don't do a lot of finger blending, but every now and then I'm going to soften an edge. You know, I use kind of the side of my finger like so. Um, but um, I'm going to try to minimize my finger blending. And I think I want this a little darker. And right now it's kind of like, yeah, it's okay, right? It's like it doesn't have very much punch. So we need to do something about that. And that's, this is, this place in a painting is a place that I, um, you know, I talk about stuff having, being in a yuck stage, that every painting has a kind of yuck stage. I, I wouldn't call this yuck. I would say that there's not enough on there for me to make very much judgment about it. And I find overall what my students tend to do, they start making really bad self-negative ne talk before you even have anything, hardly anything on there to like be able to say. You just, you're starting to pick on yourself before you even, you know, before you, it's warranted. So don't do that. You gotta, get, you gotta get enough on there before you can see what's going on. Then, you know, then you can start making, you know, assessments and judgments and all that. But, be, you know, don't do that right away. Okay, so now, now we've kind of got some kind of value set up that's not, not bad. But it's not all that exciting either. So let's add on to that some darker green up in here. So here's a question, Marla. Yeah. Um, is there a reason why you chose that color paper? Yeah. Um, the question is, is there a reason I chose this color paper? Yes, because I had in mind that I was going to start with a green um, uh, foreground. So in this case, I, you know, I, I had that in mind. Um, I, I have different ideas about that sometimes. Sometimes I'm going to choose something that's completely opposite, com complementary. I'm going to just pump up this color a little bit. That's nice. Um, I want to 
I want to get, I'm going to add on to this green. So this is a more of olive green. So I'm adding a little bit more complexity to this mass. Now I've got a little bit too light. I think I want a little bit darker even. Can go ahead. Now, now see we're getting somewhere. Now it's starting to have a little bit more pop. That's good. Now I feel like I want a little bit of something back there. So what if, what if we add something like this back in here? And then that gives me the opportunity to um, maybe this. I like that. And m maybe um, maybe this. So now we're really going so for some complementary action. And that's kind of fun. Um, no, and I feel like that in there is, those shapes are a little funky, so I'll kind of come and clean that up. Okay, now I, I feel like I'm kind of getting somewhere. Soften this, maybe play with these edges a little bit more. Thinking about my... Right. Okay, now... Go ahead. I think the consensus is that everybody loves the palette cam. Oh, is that right? Everybody loves the palette cam? I'm glad. We, it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't easy. <laughs> it wasn't easy, but we really wanted to do it. So um, we're stoked that you guys like it. It's really good. It had to happen. It definitely had to happen. A little warmer here on the horizon, maybe. We have a question from Peggy. Uh huh. Um, she asks, uh, when working in your when working in your studio, do you use natural light only or artificial light? Oh, I use artificial light mostly, because I'm you know I I, I don't um, yeah otherwise I would. Yeah, I don't, I don't have like skylights. So it's, it's a very, um, it might look m more than it probably does on camera. It looks, you know, more fallacial. And um, it's, just, it's really, um, my studio is really a pimped out garage. It's, <laughs> it's what it is. It's, um, it's really nice. It's beautiful. It, it's adjacent to my garden. So all that's really great, but it's, it's just a garage. Not just, it's a garage. So, um, I, yeah, I don't have, it's not, it doesn't have any kind of special light. Right now we have some nice um, lighting because we've got the, um, we've got the um, garage door open. Because it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful warm day here in Portland. So I'm just, a lot of times the, the color is, the color choices are, okay, what's it thirsty for? And I'm just playing with that. And of course, knowing what it, what's going to work is, is a, a, a thing of having um, mileage and experience, but I'm putting something down and putting something else down and putting something else down. And so I'm feeling like this one's kind of coming together. I'm going to put some softer color now. Now, this is where orchestrating hue, value, and intensity 
really comes into play because now I'm settling down. So I've got this really emerald green in here and I'm going to settle some of it down. I'm going to let some of it be, um, set some of it back. And so that lets some of it pop forward and some of it set back a little bit. So we have another question. Mm -hmm. um, did you decide on the horizon as your focal point? This is my focal point. Yeah, yes. This composition just lends itself to that just sort of very, very naturally. So now I'm just going to come in with some mark making in here. I want to get to the next version so that we can just see the difference. And also you used a blue spruce for your sketch. Yes, I did. And I, I, I just like it, so I, I kind of stick with it. It's kind of my go-to. You wouldn't have to. I mean, uh, uh, you just, you just kind of develop a few things that you that feel right and work for you and um, and then after that you can kind of play. Um, I want to do one thing in the sky. I'm going to bring this sky, this blue down just a little bit. I'm graying that blue. Uh, the zenith, so again, it's just bringing everything here. Everything to that focal point. And I want, might want to hit it with a little bit more intensity. Now I'm pressing hard. You know, I haven't pressed very hard yet. But now I need to, to get that on there. And, and, but I have the opportunity to do that because I've stayed pretty overall, pretty thin. And how about some other mark making in here just for fun because I like to. gives it a little texture. I'm not trying to be tricky. I'm just bringing some texture and some um, direction, some movement to the, to the piece by doing that. A little bit lighter here maybe, the tops of those banks. And maybe a little bit Maybe it would be fun to have this be a little bit lighter. Yeah, that's really nice. Another question. Mm -hmm. um, why are you leaving the foreground water unfinished? And can you repeat the question? Why am I leaving the foreground water unfinished? I don't think it's unfinished. I think it is, um, if I don't want to put any more detail here, it's not where I want you to look. I want you to look here. So this kept simple. In terms of finish, I did make it darker here. It's a little, there's a gradation. This, this gradation in the water, this gradation here is bringing your eye, the viewer's eye, right here. And that's what I want. I don't need to, um, just because something is in the foreground doesn't necessarily mean it needs to have more detail as such. So, um, yeah, I think it's, um, I could just give a little bit more in here. And then I'm going to move on to the next version. So, mm -hmm. uh, Kath asks uh, what your reference is for this. Um, you're working from your book. Um, no, I, I, I have my book so that I can get some ideas, but I, there is no reference. This is a made-up scene. There's, there's no reference. This is, yeah, I don't. So, a little 
little more color. Okay, I think that's good. Let's call that one. Let's call that one there. I think it's good. Can you check your mic real quick? Maria? Yeah. Did I? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. All right. Now, the next one um, I have in mind to do um, a night scene for you guys. So that means compressing all the values. So all the values will be close together. Let's see. Where's the. Yep. And uh, just to let Kath know, she's curious what you're looking at, and you're looking at your book. Yeah, I'm looking um, down at my book. And you can show the book yeah. a little later. Yeah, I can show it later. Okay, cool. Yeah. And we'll figure out uh, my audio. I know it's hard to hear me, but we'll, okay. we'll figure yeah, that yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, next, maybe next episode. Yep. Yeah, we got to, you know, it takes us a little bit to figure everything out. We got to like, you know, take, we have to bite off one issue at a time. And our issue that we wanted to, to bite off was um, the palette cam. <laughs> so uh, we're getting there. I think about the first time when we did the stream. That was, you know, we've come a long, we've come a long way. Okay, composition again, same one. Little, little tree, big tree, little tree. Group of trees. Meandering stream. Again, I could kind of do it in my sleep. Something like that, okay. So I want everything to be kind of dark in value. I am, I'm going to go ahead and, and get my trees in kind of dark. Uh-oh. Lost it in the, there we go. And go ahead and get a little value because I know I'm going to want it, everything pretty dark. All right, maybe. So I can get a group of kind of things that are on dark, dark value. Um, some brown, some green. What else? Some blue. All of these are about the same value. So I can start to layer this foreground with those. Block the whole, nice big strokes using the whole side of the stroke, the stick rather. This guy. So now I want, um, whoop. it's hot, and so this tape is um, coming loose. Now I'm going to put this background in something like this. And right here I'm thinking it would be cool to have that a nice hot light. Now, the interesting thing about this is I might want to have some of that in the, in the water, but maybe not all of it. I think I want the water to be, um, whoo, oops. I want the sky to be dark blue. I'm just putting something down, seeing if it'll work. 
I've got, a, you know, I've got some guides. I've got lo lots of practice doing these, but I don't know exactly. And can you remind everyone what paper you're using? This is, um, the paper is pastel matte. I, this is Terry Ludwig, um, I love his darks. His pastels are great for nocturnes. And I've got this little tiny piece, because um, I'm almost out, <laughs> and I need to get online and order some more pastels. And just as a reminder, whenever you finish a piece, you use fix it. Um, that's not entirely true. I, it depends. If I, if it's a large piece that, um, ha that I'm intending to frame with a, um, a, um, mat, uh, and I like, I like to do that. I like the, um, I like to frame my stuff with off-white mats. Um, then yeah, I'm gonna use a I'm gonna use a um, a fixative, but for smaller pieces that don't have as maybe quite as much pigment, I don't necessarily use a a, um, a fixative. I'd rather not. I'd rather not fix them, but. Um, it depends. Okay, so now I'm adding on to these colors in here. That's pretty fun. Okay, now I want I want more richness in this. foreground and I'm losing my figure ground on these trees. Maybe some more gray in the water. And maybe some up in the sky even too. And a little bit more pop of color in the Getting there, what I actually feel like is that um, the pink's a little much. So um, here's a question: What size mat would you choose for this piece that you're work currently working on? Um, well, I I like a wider mat. I think these look absolutely stunning with a wide mat. But I know it's sort of it's actually sort of going out of. Um, favor to do a wide mat. So it's, I guess it's kind of a personal um, choice, really. But I like that look. That's, you know, my preference. I have one in the house. I, I, we could go get it that's, that's framed and matted. I've, I only kept a couple of these. Um, I wish I had kept more of them, <laughs> but I only kept a few, um, and um, David says, 
Terry, if you're listening, send Marla some egg pa eggplant pastels. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff. Terry. <laughs> yeah, I know. I need them. But I, I get, I, I can get them. I just am lazy. I just, you know, and I forget. Oh, yeah, I need those. I get lazy. Okay, um, I want this kind of chestnut in here, I think. Yeah, oh yeah. See that, that's like a color like, oh yeah, that's good. It, that's, it wants that. Just that little, little warm, warm it up a tiny bit. Now I think I went too far, so I'm gonna back off a little bit with a little something, a little more neutral over the top of that. But I love it when you're painting and you like do something and oh yeah that that's that that worked. Make a mark. And another question, um, mm -hmm. or just more of a statement. For the most part, you do not cut your mats or do your own framing or anything like that. I do not. Yeah. The the question is, do for the most part you do not. Um, I I I don't do my own framing or cut mats. No, I don't anymore. Um, and honestly, I, it's, it's rare that I sell a really large pastel anymore. I used to, but I, I, I have a tendency to when I'm doing something large that I'm going to do it in oil or acrylic just because of the, the, the ease and the expense. Um, is so you know much more with pastel um, that um, you know that's just my my preference these days. Um, I, even the small stuff, I, I I sell a lot of stuff unframed nowadays just because it's um, I'm so busy with the lessons that um, that I just don't have time. I used to frame. I used to do my own framing. Woo, it's a lot of work. So now I'm just kind of going in and defining the form. You know, I like get the color rolling the way I want it to, but I don't worry about, um, like I only like worry about one thing at a time. I got to get the color going. Yeah, the shapes aren't exactly right, but um, that's okay. I, so I'm, I, I, try to like reserve judgment on everything until I get it you know you got to get the whole thing happening as a unified whole and until you 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 have that you know I try just to be nice to myself like oh no it's not there yet I'll get there I'll get there um, so now I can come in and get these little and th this, to me, like th this little stuff like this, to give it that pop, you know, I want it to have that. And I see, like, students, they just don't um, go, like, oh, I, like, oh, you had, like, a great start. And then you gave up. Um, or they don't, they don't know why it doesn't have that, that, that oomph that they want. And I know it's hard. It's hard to like figure out what to do, and it's also scary. <laughs> like, oh, I'm going to ruin it, but um, you you won't. You can't. So you just you know go for it. Like those little marks, you know, just pull it pull it all together. Um, and some of this. Some of this action, I love that. Um, maybe, maybe even a little. Mm, yeah, I do need Terry. I need Terry here. Maybe some more of this. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Get the bank, the edge of the bank there. Just a little more definition. So, and just a couple little marks get to um, describe the form. And I want to do that with as few uh, moves as I can. So 
So yeah, this is nice. Now when I did the variation series, I wasn't using any pastel mat. I mean, there was, I don't think there was pastel mat. So, um, you know, I wish I would have had that. I'm going to add, I'm going to add this kind of blue in there too. So different kinds of these bright blues, bright dark blues into the mix. Yeah, this is fun. Okay, uh, let's take a look at this one. Yeah, I think that's cool. Maybe, maybe a little bit of playing with this shape up here, or this, this, this guy. Shape of the tree form a little bit. These little sky holes. Got it. It's tricky to get them so that they look like they're natural. You don't want to like. I don't want too many dots. So here's another question. Okay. Um, how do you ship um, an unframed pastel? How do you oh. mail one? Okay. Yeah. How do I mail un? The question is, how do I ship or mail an unframed pastel? Okay. It's not. It's pretty simple. Actually, well, it depends on the size. Obviously, smaller is easier. But um, what I do is um, I take two. Well, first of all, I'm going to put glassine over the pastel, and I'm going to tack it, not not all the way around, just tack it at the top. So I'm going to put that piece of glassine, you know, like like so, to the same size, and just tack it up the top. And then I'm going to get two pieces of foam core and I'm going to sandwich that pastel right in between those two pieces of foam core really tight and tape those pieces of foam core together so nothing is moving. It's not wiggling around at all. And then I take that little sandwich and I wrap that little sandwich hopefully in some bubble wrap. And then I put that in some more cardboard box or whatever it is. So pretty, pretty easy, pretty um, reliable. I haven't ever had any troubles. Okay. Um, what's next? What did I, what did I have next on the docket? Oh, um, oh, you art paper and watercolor. So that's going to be a, a little bit more materials. Can you put the mat up one more time? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, it's, this one turned out fun. I like I like this little mark making in here. Now notice that I started out on this horizon right here. This shape, this distant um, hillside or whatever it is, um, with a really intense bright blue. And then I settled that back with a, a dark green, so that and it pops along the edge. So that blue is still vibrating there, but it's not c coming forward. So that shape gets to go back, um, and I, you know, I want that. I don't want that to come forward so much. Okay. So now, now we get to play with some watercolor. How's everybody doing? How's everyone doing? I hope you're enjoying this. Um, Make sure you check out the watercolor sketching workshop. Only five more days of our sale. So um, it, it's been really fun. And so now I'm going to get to do a little bit of watercolor for you. Um, it's, um, I have loved doing the watercolor sketching. Um, it's just um, been really um, helping me with all my painting and drawing. I feel like it's such um, a practice that I've always really wanted to dig into. And I was so um, happy that it was so well received and people, people are also finding a lot of, a lot of um, creativity and joy and um, inspiration with it. So check it out. Um, my website is paintinglessonswithmarla.com. Okay, so now 
going to get rid of the pastels for just a little bit. Just hide them for a minute. And move this out of the way. So the, there's a little lip. Most of the pastels are sitting in, in the palette. So um, it's pretty safe to do this as long as I don't crunch down or stand on it or something. So it's pretty, pretty, pretty good. Okay, need a little bit of water. This is kind of fun. This bucket, it's one of those items that I've had in my studio right here. You can kind of barely see it. That's my maiden name because <laughs> that's, that's my maiden name because that's, um, I had to, I've had this bucket since I was in art school. So a long, 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 long time. Um, all right, watercolors. You guys get to see those? Oh yeah, oh, great. That's a good view. Oh, cool. Okay, just give them a little spritz, get them go going. Now the thing about these, this is UART board. I think it's one that I made. Um, now the thing about this is I want to use um, this brush. See, I have my nice new watercolor brush that I just got. It's got a beautiful point on it. It's a nice brush. It's a Utrick Sabolette. It's a number 12. This is also a Utrick Sabolette. Let me put it in the water and show you what I've done to it. This is also a Utrick Sabolette. See the difference? Um, I have used this one in the past on watercolor paper, which was a no-no. Um, not good for the brush, and so I messed it up. So now, um, when I'm working today on this uh, UART, I definitely don't want to use my brand new one. So I'm going to put that away. It just eats away. That sandpaper will just eat away at your brush. So the first thing that I'm going to do on this guy, let's see what size I've got here, just make sure. Yeah, okay. Keep them all consistent. And when I was doing this series, I cut a, a couple of these. So I, when I went in the studio and was ready to do one, I just put plunk this right on and I didn't even have to think about size. So that's cool. So this is my one of my other favorites. It's a Create a Color Monolith. This one happens to be an HB, but um, it comes in all different hardnesses. I like the HB because the HB kind of sits right in the middle. I find this pencil, this graphite pencil, be super satisfying to draw on the sanded paper with. There's just something about it. It just I just love it. Um, the Downside, of course, of, with this kind of pencil is it has no um, wooden sheath. So if you're like me, my studio has carpeting laid down in some of it, but some of it's cement floor. So if I drop this on the cement, it's going to shatter. Um, so you have to be you know, a little careful about that. You don't want to waste them. But I just love this. I just love it. There's something really tactile about the way um, these go down on the sanded paper. Different for me, to me, um, than uh, other graphite pencils. So I'm just going to get a little something in here, a little value, move it around just a little bit before I get some watercolor going. Now, with watercolor underpainting with pastel, um, I know there's a lot. There's a there's so many ways you could approach it. You could make it so that your watercolor painting is is a very much a foundation and lots of drawing and almost like a finished painting underneath the pastel, or you can use it as more of a, a spontaneous, abstract, colorful base with which to play with. And of course, that's more of my um, how I think of it. 
I typically am not going to do a finished watercolor un that, that I'm intending to put pastel over. If I'm going to do a watercolor, it's usually a watercolor, um, you know, a more finished painting. I'm going to leave it. So, um, but there's so many ways you can approach it. You see that? Okay, okay, good. So I'm just going to come in here and lots of pigment, lots of color. That's my intent. The watercolor has, will significantly um, change in its intensity. It will get a lot duller um, when it dries on this paper. So I'm going to start out way brighter than I think I need to. I don't know what I want to do here. I'm just going to put some stuff down and see what happens. How's that? Lots of pigment. Let's go for it. Another simple question. Yeah. Uh, do you stand on a fatigue map? Um, the question is, do I stand on a fatigue map? No, I don't. Um, but I, I do stand on a mat. Um, it's not, it's a thick mat, but it's not meant necessarily for that. And it's been a piece of carpet. But I don't, I, I've heard that people buy the mats that, um, hairstylists stand on, um, but no, I don't, I don't necessarily. Okay. All right, I don't, I'm not sure what I want to do. I think I'm going to make that sky dark. Because I think it's will be fun. And it's going to be not as dark as it looks. And another question. Mm -hmm. um, when using watercolor as an underpainting, does it take up too much tube? No. That's the beauty. Uh, okay, the question is, when using watercolor as an underpainting, does it take up too much tooth? In other words, is it hard then to get lots of other layers of pastel over the top? No, that's one of the real beauties of watercolor underpainting, that it, it really it hardly touches it, actually, the tooth. So you have a lot of opportunity to get lots and lots of, um, of layers on. Um, the, the other kind of paint that I will use, because it has the same uh, kind of idea, it's thin, is flu fluid acrylics are also very thin and allow don't take up very much tooth at all. Now, if you put acrylic paint, like the, the full-bodied acrylics on this, and then you tried to get um, pastel over the top of that, you'd be in trouble. It would um, really um, be difficult to get um, the pastel over the top, it would kind of have do have a sort of resist quality to it. Okay, now I'm gonna I'm gonna have to dry this. Can run inside. Can you? Yeah. Oh, but I love some of this these blooms, some of these edges. That's this is the kind of thing that watercolor is doing that you just you know it does it so spontaneously that you just can't get with pastel alone or watercolor alone is going to do a different thing too in terms of the finish. So I'm going to let Kevin take this in the house for just a second and I'll just talk to you guys. So um, yeah, let's see what else is going. So I am working right now on a second addition to the watercolor sketching workshop. So it's going to be garden journaling. And, I, of course, I have a lovely little garden, very fortunate. So I've been just sitting out there sketching my garden, 
sketching fruits and vegetables and all, all things garden related. So that's going to be the next uh, um, watercolor workshop. And I'm also um, throwing around some other ideas on other pastel workshops. So if you guys want to chime in and let me know what you would like to, to have coming up. And uh, yeah, my, my live workshop schedule is, um, you know, uh, way up in the air. So I have a little bit more time than I had anticipated this year to be working on some other workshops. So if you have some ideas, I'd love to hear what you'd, you'd like to have coming at you. So um, yeah, anyway, I, I hope you guys like that palette cam. I think it's pretty neat. And what else will we do? Um, yeah, oh, let me show you the book. Okay, yeah. This is the, this is the little 100 variation book. Now, don't look at this and go, where can I get it? Because you can't get it anymore. It was a blurb book. It's a um, self-published little book. But um, uh, what's kind of cool is I, I did all kinds of versions. So there's a neutrals page, and this is kind of earth tones. Let's see what else did I do? Oh yeah, these are these are super super wild colors. So that was fun. There was, the sky was the limit. I didn't put any kind of constraints. I didn't have any preconceived notions about what I thought would work. I just tried to see how many times I could, you know, go go for it. And it turned out you can you can make it work a bunch of different times. Let's see what else. Oh, this is more um more the green tones. So it, it was an amazing project. The other thing that I um, did with the project was that I did a lot of mixed media. I used oil washes. I used monoprint underpaintings. I really kind of unleashed the underpainting idea and really um, kind of went to town with different mixed media. Okay. Oh, wow. That's pretty good. It's pretty chromatic. More so than I thought. All right. That's really nice. Okay. Good. So now I'm going to put this stuff aside. Some pastels going again. Great. Now let's see, I know I have a, one of these that's similar to that in here. Let's take a look at it. Which one did I like? Uh, that's pretty, that's something. This one is kind of like that. That kind of reminds me of it. Um, not exactly. There's, um, what else could we do? There's this one. It's pretty, I love this one. But the, that, this is kind of not any of those. So let's just do something different. Red, red, that's probably not going to work. So I have to kind of decide which is going to be the red. Maybe, this, maybe I should make the trees dark, but let this foreground be mostly red. I think that would be the way to approach it. So let just the, these edges um, happen, because I think that's what's beautiful about the, this is the edges. So, yeah. I don't really need the second tree, but I'll get it in there anyway. Now, sometimes with underpainting, you go, oh God, well, I really like the underpainting, and it's, it seems like a shame to cover some stuff up. And there, there is that little play, like how, you know, what, what do you cover up and what do you keep? Um, and that's, to me, that's just more of that interesting dance, the kind of mis mystery of it. Here's a few suggestions uh, in, the, in the chat uh -huh. about possible workshops. Oh, okay. Um, somebody has on their wish list a figure thin pastel. Okay, I have taught those that live, and um, the question um, that the suggestion was somebody has on their wish list figures in pastel, and I um, 
you know, I used to teach a live segment of figure, the figure in pastel, and I did a whole series of figures in pastel a number of years ago. Um, I would have to have a wellspring of people that wanted that, um, but if, if I get that, I will um, definitely put it, put it on the list, consider it. Yeah, I could read um, off a few others. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like what what do we got? We have um, a beach demo. A beach demo, okay. That would be cool. Um, acrylic and oil painting demos, which you have oil. Yeah, I have, yes, we have oil um, on the website. We have, um, yeah. What else? Uh, birds in watercolor. Birds in watercolor. Well, okay. Yeah. We are um, in the monthly that's coming up for next year um we we did birds in pastel though i like this too um abstracted figures that would be cool. oh yeah that would be cool can you repeat um abstracted figures people are saying and of course plain air which we probably well, we'll, we'll get to probably get to this summer yeah yeah, yeah. we we'll probably we'll yeah well we'll be doing a lot of plain air this summer yeah we definitely want to so we'll record it yeah We, we want to do plein air. And coastal, coastal landscapes. We do have a month in year two. Yeah, we do. Seascapes. seascapes. We do have that, yeah. But, you know, the thing is, we're only scratching the surface. So it's the thing about the, 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 the standalone workshops aren't really an opportunity to kind of dig into a subject a little deeper. Um, the monthly... The monthly is meant to be a foundation of just keeping you engaged, keep, keeping inspiration going, building, um, building your skills. Um, oh, that's kind of interesting. You know what? I like that. It looks like the moon. Does it not? What do you think, Kevin? It looks good. Yeah, I like that. I like that too. So. That's kind of cool. When something sort of reveals itself to you, that's, I, I love that. I love that about painting. Okay, yeah. There it is. It tells you, it tells you what. You barely have to do anything. It tells you, but you have to listen. If you don't listen, okay. Yeah, that's fun. Here's an like interesting it. question. Mm -hmm. uh, do you ever do any memory painting? I, 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 th yes. The question is, do I ever do any memory paintings? And I have a, um, I have, I, I, um, if I'm going to do that, kind of thing, it's probably going to be a sketch, something in a sketchbook rather than a painting. Um, and that's not because I don't, wouldn't like to, just, um, I think my, my big thing as a, as a painter is really that I just am not going to get to everything, you know, I'm just not gonna. And so I, I'm, I kind of pick my, pick my battles. And I guess that's one that I just haven't. Um, it's so hard. I, I, I'm so um, moved by the visual field, and I'm also moved by an inner 
inner um, vision and um, voice that is, uh, you know, I've hardly had a chance to explore as a painter. So um, it, it's, it's difficult. Okay, that's looking really fun. Really, really fun. It's pretty wild. So we'll see if we can get it to like settle down just a little bit. So um, the book that you showed of, of the variations, yeah. that was the book for your show, correct? It was a promotional book for your show or did you get I, it published for a different reason? I, I, I did it for myself, really. It, I, didn't re I didn't really have a show for those paintings. I, I wrote the article for Pastel Journal and I, um, um, I, had, I had a little studio, well it wasn't so little, I had a studio show, it was a long time ago, a different studio, um, and I had a big space and they were up on the wall and it was kind of cool because they were all um, displayed you know, on one kind of big wall, um, but I didn't have a show. So the purpose of the book was for your own edification, just to order yeah, all just the yeah, so I could see what I did, and it was great. You know, I'm really glad I have it. It was a blurb book, and that's um, um, you know self uh, one of the companies that you can get do self publishing through, and you know that was a long time ago, so I don't know. I can't even. Real, I, I wouldn't want to speak for them and, oh, that's a good way to go or, you know, do that because I don't really know anymore. This is looking really rich and fun. Now I want to play with that red foreground a bit and kind of settle it down. Um, and these will be available for sale on Daily Paintworks? Yes. Okay. The paint, these paintings will be available for sale in a few hours on Daily Paintworks. Last, the last live stream, I, um, yeah, so you, you probably want to check, because if you're interested in them, the, um, yeah, probably get on it, I guess. Another question. Can you put a little house in the river, like last time? <laughs> Just kidding, that was, that was my question. Oh, oh, joke. oh, Kevin, ha ha, Kevin. <laughs> Very funny. Last live stream, if you if you tuned in, you know that I, I had this crazy like ghosted house in the in the river, and I didn't mean to, and I could I couldn't see it. That's the way it works when you're the painter; you don't see it, and everybody else saw it but me. Okay, I'm 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 struggling a little bit with that foreground. Want to settle the red down some? And I don't, I'm reticent to put green on top of it. Um, so I'm not sure where I'm going to go. Um, maybe, maybe I will do some more green. And just to answer another question here, um, Daily Paintworks is a site where you sell a lot of your smaller works? Yes, it is, yeah. Unframed smaller works. Yeah, Daily Paintworks. The question was, Daily Paintworks is a site where I sell a lot of my smaller pieces and um, uh, un unframed stuff. Yeah, I do. And it, it's really great. Um, if you know who Carol Marine is, Carol Marine and her husband run that, that site or started that site. And um, they do a really great job. And it's, um, there's a lot, of, um, a lot of stuff on there. Can you just talk a little bit about easels? Uh, what do you prefer for pastel? Is there an easel that you kind of lean towards or anything like that? Oh, that that's finally working. Um, yeah, um, there's a question is easels. What kind of easels do I like? Um, so this easel that I have here is a Santa Fe 2. And I've had this easel for a really long time. It's caked with good, good painting um, <laughs> mileage. Um, and I have um, 
and I, I subsequently have purchased a second one. That's what you see in the background. That one is as well. Um, and, you know, there's all kinds of amazing, beautiful, big, expensive e easels. And I've, you know, at times thought, oh, I, you know, I'm going to get, you know, something else. But I always kind of come back. It's always served me really well. And so I, I've sort of resisted that, that need to have something bigger, better, whatever. Um, it's a good, it's a good easel. Um, plain air, I have a couple different rigs. Um, the one I use the most is an Artworks Essentials. Um, okay. Let's see what time I got. Okay, I'm going to write. All right, I'm going to do a couple things here that I think are going to just bring this to a point that I... Somebody said they went to Blurb, and you can still order the book called 100 Variations. Oh, you can? <laughs> wow. You can? Um, yes, someone just went to Blurb and said that you can still order the 100 Variations book. I did not know that. Um, can that person, can, can you tell us how, how much? It must be expensive. I think it's expensive for what it is, because it's not, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of this little thing. It's got, it's probably a lot of money. I bet it is. And here's a question about uh, asking about a class on basic uh, solving and ex uh, explaining basic composition and color problems. You've addressed that in a few workshops. Yeah, so in the monthly, um, yeah, I, well, I, well, the foundation of painting is understanding value and and having a good handle, a very steady, firm handle on color theory, um, which is all, you know, what I'm doing right now, I'm orchestrating value, hue, intensity to get you to look where I want. I'm also doing other things. I'm, you know, building texture and whatnot, but that firm um, understanding of value, hue, intensity is, um, something that I, I, I really focus on a, a lot in my all of my teaching and workshops. Um, composition is, um, is threads through everything as well. So, you know, all, all the aspects of painting, it all swims together. I do think as, a, as an instructor and as a, as a teacher, I really encourage people to sort of bite off one thing at a time. You can't, you can't learn um, all there is to know about color theory while you're um, trying to, you know, learn about composition. You've got to, like, take it one step at a time, and you've got to give yourself the benefit of the doubt, therefore. So if you've, if you've been working on composition, then focus on that. Maybe your color stuff, your colors aren't quite what you want, but if you're getting some of the, co the composition stuff, you got to give yourself, you know, a, um, a little victory lap, right? So um, all of it threads together, and so you can't, talk, you can't talk about composition without talking about value. You can't talk about color without talking about composition. So it all, you know, it's all, this, like I said, it's messy. It is messy. Oh yeah, check this out. Oh, there's, uh, there's the. Uh, oh wow, there it is. How much is it? Oh, it's not terribly bad. Yeah. Okay, so it's not. Um, so you can get it. Um, the the blurb book. Um, that's good. I might have to get a couple more. Okay, I think that's pretty neat. Um, I think I'm going to leave this one now. And now, but I am going to go ahead and put a little pastel on my little moon. And maybe, just maybe, something like that. 
soften it just a tiny bit. I think that's pretty, pretty, pretty nifty. Okay. So um, here's a question. Mm -hmm. When you use a stick, you don't put it back in the box, you keep it down on your easel? Yeah, I, I do because what I'm doing is I'm developing that working pile and that and so I'm gonna try to to grab for the um, what's in the pile that I've got working before I add on to my so in this in that way I'm keeping my palette as limited as I can for as long as I can so yeah so the, the only bummer about that is you guys now don't get to see when I'm grabbing those which I hadn't really thought of until we had the palette cam. Now I gotta think. Gotta think about that. Have to add another yeah. Cam. Yeah. No, <laughs> that's not gonna happen soon. But um, all right. So let's call this one. I also, think. Also, one one quick question about the palette. So mm -hmm. you arrange the palette through value, hue, hue and, intensity. and intensity. So the way I learned color theory is that the three aspects responsible for any color's appearance are its value is it light is it dark is it you know where is it sitting on the value scale its hue is it yellow is it red is it orange and its intensity how bright or dull is it um, so let's see if we can talk about that a little bit so um, and, and that's really important so Let's, let's do this. Let me see if I can get it right. So this stick is a green, so it's some kind of green, and it's kind of middle-ish value, um, and it's of low intensity. This one is um, green, and its value is, I'm, I think, it's fairly, these are actually fairly close in value. We'd have to test that. Um, we can do it here to see. Okay, let's see. I might be off on this one. Let's see. So it's darker. Let's see. It's definitely darker than this one. I don't know. Oh, it's right there, sitting right there, right? Because we know, oh, that, it's, it's definitely lighter than this one. Let's do the same, th so we know it's this number three. So let's look at this one. That one is darker, it's lighter. So yeah, these are very similar in value. I mean, in, in, yeah, in value. They're in the same color family, they're both greens, but they are of different intensities. Now this understanding is hard. I think it's the hardest part about color. And once you have a good understanding of it, you can begin to orchestrate your, your paintings in a much more um, um, thoughtful way and um, informed way. So I think it's, you know, it's huge. It takes practice. So even even I was you know like a eh, little little unsure about some things. Okay, so next up, it's ninety minutes. So is watercolor, straight watercolor. So we're gonna have some um, issues with that. We're gonna have some issues with that because um, I'm gonna work on the easel. So I'm going to get lots of, of um, drips, but that's okay. Um, I think it would be fun just to um, play with some watercolor and um, see what happens. And I just want to um, show you that way, way back in the day, I did this one. And this is watercolor on, this is watercolor paper with a um, pencil line. So this kind of attitude toward the variation series this might have served as a really cool underpainting, but I liked it, so I didn't um, add any pastel to it. Um, so we'll try out something like this. 
And I put some watercolor paper. Yep, we need that again. Oh, I didn't put the um, I didn't put the mat around that one. Well, we'll do it at the end. Okay. This one's a little bit interesting. <laughs> That's okay. All right, some watercolor paper. This is some pretty um, cold press. It's very, it's actually quite cold press watercolor paper. And you know, I find watercolors to be just such a great um, media for um, doing comps, doing sketching. Um, I, I just, it's so direct. And the colors can be super, super vibrant. So um, I'm just loving it. And when I was an illustrator back in the day, back in the day, I did a lot of watercolor. And I kind of a um, little bit lost touch with it. I'm going to wipe my hands off. When I was doing illustration work, you, you basically worked in whatever medium paid. <laughs> that's what you did. <laughs> if, if, if it was pen and ink and that was what paid, then that's what you did. If it was watercolor and paid, that's what you did. That's, uh, that's the way it rolled back in the day. So, okay, I wanted to look at one thing. Yeah, I had a little, I had a little sketch in here that I wanted to share. No, oh, wrong book. Yeah, I, is there one more book? Okay, oh, Kevin's, he's a dear. He's going to go get the other book. So, all right, but in the meantime, I'll get started. We'll switch to the other cam in a sec. When Kevin gets back, he'll switch to the other cam. But we'll get it the same size, and then we'll give the, Paints a little squirt. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, we're getting all these. I'm working on all these sketchbooks all at the same time. So this is, um, yeah, so I uh, sketch my junk drawer, all kinds of fun stuff. And so, yeah, this is the page that I wanted to. Um, um, show so yeah this is very kind of a similar composition to the variation and just this kind of thing is just to me so valuable as studies for paintings and just um, practicing drawing and sketching Let's see what else have I done in here yeah so this we did as a live stream this is um, just uh, fun fun stuff so yep this is the next not to reveal too much, right? It's going to be fun. Okay. All right. All right. Let's see. I'm, I am going to do the same thing on, with the watercolor paper. Get my Create a Color Monolith. I just love this pencil. And you can move it around a little bit on the paper, watercolor paper, not as much as the pastel paper. There's something about that graphite on the pastel paper that's really, um, yep. I just get this little stream to go, go around. Now I have to decide what I want. Do I want to keep to a more sort of realistic interpretation of this, or do I want to be more playful? Um, I think to start, I'm going. I, I am going to put down some color that I think will be um, a good to layer. So if I'm thinking about these trees as having a a little bit of a backlit feel. If I start with a yellow layer, um, that will help me to do that. So if you think in terms of watercolors, you're, you're increasing the, the 
the density as you add layers. So um, when you're starting out and it's thinner, you're using more of the white of the paper to um, kind of sparkle through the, the paint. As the paint, as you layer on mo more layers and um, thicker paint, it's getting more and more dense. So we'll see how this works out. I have to be careful not to use too much water because I'll get too much of that um, dripping down. And this is just the standard piece. Yeah, this is nothing special at all. Do you remember what brand watercolor paper it is? Yeah, I think it's it's that that um, block that I had bought. I don't. I think it's Windsor Newton. And we'll get some other color in here. And do you remember offhand what size um, watercolor sketchbook you were using? Yeah, my. That watercolor sketchbook is a pentallic, and it's um, mine is mine are they're all uh, seven by ten, but um, it uh, because the watercolor sketching workshop has been like super popular. They uh, apparently they're a little hard to get that size, but you know you could use any size. Um, so I I've, I guess I've I've. Uh, Made made them in short supply, which is good. <laughs> that means <laughs> we're doing good. We're doing something right. Um, but um, yeah, you don't. You know, a lot of times I, I feel like you know students. I know you want to have a, a lot of stuff that's really really similar to what what I'm using, but you don't have to. You can substitute colors. You can substitute sizes. Um, also, some people with the sketchbooks really like a spiral. I know you like a spiral bound, right, Kevin? I do, you, yeah. yeah. So it, just because I like it doesn't mean that it's going to be the thing that you like. Maybe. I'm going to leave a little bit of the white so that I can layer over this. Now I'm going to mix up. This is, um, oh, Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray is such a great Payne's Gray is like my, you know, the watercolor version of uh, almost a little Payne's Gray and a little, little um, turquoise, and you got almost the color of the blue spruce, right? It's really close. That it's really pretty darn nice. Here's an interesting uh, kind of personal question: <laughs> uh, Are you the only artistic person in your family? I am. <laughs> I am the only artistic person in my family. My mom is a retired library administrator. My sister was not um, in, into the arts at all. Um, so yeah, I am, I'm it. I'm the... Yep. Black sheep. Sure. So that, that's really nice, just, you know, infusing these shapes with some color, letting these the little edges. I love how the watercolor pools to the edge. Um, uh, it's, you know, very, very interesting. Let's see. What do I want to pick up from that guy? I don't know what I want to make that shape in the distance. If I want to make it dark. Um, I'm going to start with something like, like this. And let that, let that sit in there a little bit. Um, I think I want, a, one thing about watercolor too is you can get this blue sky and the, I mean, it just, yeah, just a couple little strokes and boom, that's it. And you got the clouds and the, it's just um, amazing what you can do. Just 
and it's you know they're so vibrant. I want a little more warmth in there. So when I add this to a section that's already dried a little bit, I'm going to get some um, harder edges. That's okay. I don't, I just put that down. I don't know why. I don't, I mean, it's not, it almost looks like a pathway. I guess that, I guess this one here is more path than river. So I'm responding to that. That's nice. Here's another um, question, uh, unusual question, but it's uh, interesting. Okay. Um, when you're working in your <laughs> studio, uh -huh. what genres of music do you like to listen to and what, like which ones do you find helpful for creativity? Oh, I don't, yeah, the, the question is, what genres of music do you listen to and what do you find helpful for creativity? That is one question I do not answer. <laughs> don't answer that question. You'd have to come and take a live workshop from me to find out. That, that is a secret. Mostly because it's embarrassing. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> I don't have very good musical taste. Um, but what I do think about music is um, I know that one of the things that I'm doing when I'm listening to music is I'm using it to um, 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 as, a, as an energy um, like push more than a mental push so that it's so I want that music to just sort of wash over me in a in a certain way I, I'm not using it as like oh to to be a muse or to be to be contemplating it I don't know if that makes sense so this is kind of nice get a little bit bit idea of some line and you can use the pencil line in there too maybe get use the little brush that's kind of fun um, I, I want something warmer over this but I don't I didn't want to do that I'll pick it up. So that's nice. That's playful. And just come in. Um, I'm having too much fun. I'm not talking anymore. <laughs> and something like this, I, I might, I might come in. It sort of warrants a little bit of um, uh, maybe uh, some brushwork that's like so to maybe suggest some grass, um, that kind of thing. Not much. I don't want to overdo that. Question? Yeah. Um, where did you get your pastel tray? Um, I made it. Um, where did I get my pastel tray? I made it. But I know one of my students, Kathy Dunn, um, and I can um, see if I can. She, her husband, 
um, makes them. He's a woodworker. Um, so there's that. But you can make it. Um, it's not that hard. But um, there's a few people out there. It's not, it's just um, masonite and some, what is it, Kevin? What are those in there? Oh, just regular old wood. Yeah, I, I um, made it a long time ago. Long, long time ago. Just, just fir wood. Yeah, it's, yeah. Wood. Served me well. Um, I'm not allowed to say. I'm not allowed to say when year two is coming. Um, I'd get in trouble. Um, I can't make promises that we can't keep. So soon, really soon. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think that's it. We're right, right about there on time. I think. I like how this turned out. I would probably add a little bit of pencil line to it. I don't, the, uh, in the watercolor sketching class, we're adding pencil line and pen line to a lot of the sketching, which kind of takes it into a, uh, um, that, that pen line takes things into kind of a different realm, um, away, away from painting and into that sketching or drawing. And you know, I, for each page in the book, I make a decision whether I've decided to, um, let me see if I can come up with some examples. Some I feel like I don't want to add any pen line to, and others I add pen line to. So, um, you know, it really, it really depends. Uh, let's see, this other one is a good example. The um, so like these these little these little birds they look really nice with some pen line. If I had left them without the pen line, they'd have an entirely they'd have an entirely different kind of look, right? Um, you wanna do you wanna yeah? So but but this has a a, a different kind of look with the addition of the pen line. Now let's see. Um, what else have we got? So these are just simple watercolor and just, uh, you know, th they have that very watercolor look and, but still a sketch. So that's kind of a different mode. So it really depends. So I, you know, I'm deciding piece by piece, page by page, you know, what, what look it is that I want, um, the, the pages and the sketches and the paintings to have. So Okay, guys, um, that's just about it. Um, just another reminder that there are only five more days of the sale, the launch sale on watercolor sketching. So that's $33 off. So it's a really good price. And it's a really, really great workshop. I'm super proud of it. And, and people are really responding to it. It's, uh, it's inspiring for me. So um, thanks for joining me today. And I will have the variation pieces up on daily paintworks in a few hours i'm gonna go take a nice walk and get a little exercise and then i'll post them but i really appreciate you joining us and um, putting up with our shenanigans today we're really happy to have the the uh, uh palette cam and have the um, new camera set up it's exciting and um, we'll be posting another um, date for the, our next live stream really soon um, okay, I guess that's it. All right, you guys. Bye-bye.